Good morning everyone. This is Asus ZenBook EX 425J. Quite slim model, decent laptop from Asus ZenBook series. And recently what happened is when we turn on, it goes to BIOS automatically. It doesn't show any boot. Okay. So let me show you what happened. So when I press the power button, it's stuck on the Asus logo for around let's say 30 seconds or even sometimes more and then it goes to BIOS directly. If you have this sort of situation and if you are not able to see your internal SSD in there that might be the issue with Windows okay. So what are you going to do? I'm going to show you how to solve the issue okay. As you can see on my hand there is a here's the installer for windows 11 so what are you going to do first i'm going to switch it off and connect this bootable windows 10 or 11 installer and that is in uefi format and also while you you do this operation make sure you keep your charger connected so when the charger is connected and usb installer is connected you can press and hold the power button to switch it off then press the power button on again and keep pressing F2. It will take you directly to the BIOS as well. Okay. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time, which is normal. You can keep pressing it or you can just leave it. It should go back to the BIOS screen. All right. So this is the actual BIOS illustration. This is quite latest BIOS now. Traditionally, we can see the different page. As you can see here, battery sign, fan sign is a kind of not like traditional one. But if you press F7, you're going to see there is some sort of basic traditional BIOS page by pressing F7. It's called advanced mode and the other one called edge mode. Okay. But when you get to the advanced mode, we're going to go to advanced section. And from here, we need to change the USB configuration. It has to be enabled. So if you find anything else, make sure you click here and select enable. And then we're going to go to the security to make sure secure boot is enabled. So let's click on security and go down to the secure boot. This is really important for EFI boot. So as you can see here, it's already enabled, but if it's not, then you can change it to enable. Okay, and let's go there. Make sure all of them are unlocked. Exactly like that. And now the last option, we're going to go back to boot option. Now let's go back to the boot and as you can see here, it shows what is the boot option available here. Once I click here, I can see this is my USB bootable Windows 11 thumb drive. If you connect here one, you're going to see exactly similar way. And then if you press F10, it's going to save the changes and restart. You don't need to press any button. It's going to straight load up the Windows setup page. If you do have the correct bootable Windows installer, if you would like to know how to create one, then you can check the video link would be in the description. So as you can see, this is loading up. And now what happened is sometimes I found many complaints like when they go back to the Windows setup page, they don't see any internal SSD. There might be two issues. One might be the actual SSD is faulty, or maybe there is some sort of setting issues, especially with HP and Dell. By the way, the trackpad is not working. So what are you going to do? We're going to connect any sort of USB mouse, or I can use tab button and backspace button. But let me make it simple and easy. If you do have mouse, then you can connect it and perform this window setup. So I do have the USB mouse and I'm going to connect through an adapter because this machine does have 
single USB port and two type C port. So I'm going to connect right here and we will be able to use the mouse mode now. As you can see, mouse is working. Install now. Accept the terms and condition. There are two options. Go for the bottom one. Now, as you can see, this is the existing partitions. If you delete it, you're going to lose all the data. So be careful. Make sure you back up your data before you get to this point. Okay. And now I'm going to delete all of them just to create a single partition and hit next. Once I hit next, it's going to load up, copy all the files and folders to the Windows directory and it would finalize. Maybe it's going to take a couple of restarts, which is normal. And I'm going to see until the end if this boot is successful or not. By the way, if you don't see your internal drive, as I said, double check, open it up, check if this is physically okay, your SSD. You can connect into a different computer or you can use any sort of adapter or caddy to connect into different PC to see if the internal SSD is recognizable by another laptop. If it does, then once you format it, it should be fine. But if the drive is not recognizable, then obviously something wrong with the hardware. You might need to replace your SSD. But for Dell and HP, especially for 10 to 12, 13 gen processor from Intel, it does happen quite a lot because the VMD settings is not enabled. But on Asus, it looks pretty straightforward. If it doesn't show and if your SSD is physically fine, then I would suggest you to find if there is any settings called VMD, V for Victor, M for Mike, D for Delta. Okay. So the setup has almost done. And now the most important part is to have the drivers. What happens is when you reinstall freshly reinstall Windows, you might have a lot of issues with the drivers. Okay. Most of the time the trackpad doesn't work, then there is no sound and you can see the screen is not clear. Even sometimes some model, the Wi-Fi driver is, doesn't get up to date by default. So what you need to do, in this situation you might need to have external mouse, you might need to have wired connection for internet or external USB Wi-Fi stick to connect into internet. Now we're going to create desktop icons to see how many drivers are missing. Right click on this PC, show more options, manage. And from here, if you go to device manager, you can see there are lots of drivers missing. As you can see that yellow marks in there. So we need to have, first of all, Wi-Fi connection. Luckily, that model Wi-Fi drivers get up to date by default. So we're going to connect to Wi-Fi and update the drivers if you would like to know how to update drivers in many different ways let me know in the comment section i'll try my best to help you out guys thanks for watching i hope i'll see you in the next video bye for now